One of the most widely discussed features coming to PHP 8.4 is property hooks. Property hooks allow us to add behavior that is specific to a single property while allowing that behavior not to interfere with existing aspects of PHP. This is going to be a game changer for us as PHP developers. So in this video, we'll discuss how to use PHP's property hooks. Hello, developers, and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren. And on this channel, we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe so you can get our latest videos when they're published. At a high level, property hooks allow you to add custom logic directly to class properties. This means you can interact with properties like user full name as if it were a getter or a setter function without needing separate methods like set full name or get full name. We define property hooks by defining a set and get operation that will be performed when setting or getting the property. I think this section from the RFC helps illustrate the use case for property hooks. It says a primary use case for hooks is actually to not use them, but retain the ability to do so in the future should it become necessary. In particular, developers often implement get foo set foo methods on a property, not because they're necessary, but because they might become necessary in the future. And changing from a property to a method at that point becomes an API change. The get hook is used to define what happens when a property is read. For example, if we have a user class where we're tracking the user's first and last names, but we have a need to quickly get their full name, we can define the first and last properties using constructor property promotion, and then define a full name property that will have a get property hook. Then we can easily output the full name. I should note that I took this example from the RFC and then modified it a little bit for my video because it's such an excellent example. The set hook is used to define what happens when we assign a property. If we go back to our user class, we can add a set hook to our full name property that will explode the value we pass to it and then set it to first and last names. Now, one of the interesting features of property hooks is that we don't need to define both the get and the set operations, so we can create some interesting behaviors. If we define just the get property, we'll create a read only property. And if we try to write to it, we'll get an error message. We can also define just the set property hook, which will create a write only property. The amazing application of this is that we can use it to create a property that encrypts or hashes a value while keeping the hash value secured from the outside by making it private. One of the discussions about property hooks online is that this makes it easy for us to create confusing code because while we expect the property to just set the value, it's doing something behind the scenes. This is no different than having a set password function that does the same thing, so I don't really see the downside. We'll have more on property hooks after this word from our sponsors. Do you want higher clarity in production, but don't have the time to earn your degree in observability? Me too. Forget logs, metrics, and traces. HoneyBadger Insights is built around structured events. When you send your application logs and other events to HoneyBadger, you'll unlock the power of HoneyBadger's powerful new querying language, Badger QL. You can then use Badger QL to ask any question about your data, convert any event into a metric, and chart your metrics on a custom dashboard. You can do all of this on HoneyBadger's free plan as part of their comprehensive monitoring suite, which includes error tracking, uptime monitoring, status pages, and more. Speaking of error tracking, did you know that an error is really just a first class event in HoneyBadger? In fact, you can use Insights and Badger QL to explore all of your existing HoneyBadger data in new ways. It's pretty cool. Give it a try today at honeybadger.io. That's honeybadger.io. Another feature added to PHP 8.4 as part of the property hooks functionality is the ability to define properties that have asymmetric visibility. This means that we can define a property that can be publicly get, but can only be set by the class or its children. We do this by declaring the property as public like normal, but then adding either private set or protected set before the type like the code on the screen. Now, if we try to write to it, we'll get a type error but we can still define a child class that can modify the property. Ideally, the child class understands how to correctly handle this anyways, so it's not really gonna mess up what the parent is doing. I think this is a really awesome addition. Another piece of functionality we're getting with property hooks is the ability to define property hooks inside of our interfaces, so our classes are forced to implement them. The piece of this that's really powerful is that we can define the property inside our interface as read only by including get after it, or read and write using get and set. And then we can use constructor property promotion to define the property. As a brief recap, property hooks are a feature being added to PHP 8.4. They allow us to override the default get and set operations on a property. We can define properties with asymmetric visibility now, and we can also define them inside of interfaces. 
I hope you enjoyed our video. If so, make sure you subscribe, comment, share, and like as it does help others find us. What new features in PHP 8.4 are you most excited about? Let me know in the comments section below or send me a message on x or php.social at Scott Keck Warren. I would love to hear from you and it always brightens my day to hear from a fan. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading. Thank you.